Hi, it's time for Tea for Teachers. My name's Steve Watts. I've been teaching children for over 15 years, and I hope that we can spend a little time together where we can talk about teaching English to young learners. Uh, I'm being very 21st century uh, and only using my phone to uh, look for some of your questions, and I hope to answer the question from um, Elena Tarantino. Uh, any relation? Uh, maybe you could introduce us, and uh, some of our video clips could be. No, I'm not sure the two genres go together, to be honest, but there we go. So, uh, hello to you, Elena. Uh, you said that uh, you are starting to teach um, very small children, uh, early primary school children, and uh, you are at a loss as to know what to do and how to get the lesson started. Uh, I think it is important that perhaps uh, you find a course that you like. I hope it's one of our courses, uh, but find a course that you like with a um, with all the material laid out, so there is um, something that you can follow, and they will give uh, lots and lots of hints and tips about how to make a positive start. What I would say from the beginning is uh, do something that uh, gets the children moving. Um, don't sit them down too much and expect to have um, any language being uh, given back. Uh, I would do an activity where they need to move, start off with some verbs, and then I think you can go into um, an activity where you're trying to get the names. I often find um, an activity where I use my finger and I say, me, 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 okay, and what's, 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 pointing to different child, what's, 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 what's your name? And of course, if they don't immediately answer, say, uh, is your name David? Uh, no, and that's to a girl, perhaps, you know, so we might get the class laughing a little bit, it breaks the tension and say, is your name uh, Sarah? Is your name uh, Jane? And of course I can keep listing and it becomes very obvious what uh, the answer is. Um, we've spoken a little bit about T on Tea for Teachers about the fact that I don't like translating names. So if you're teaching in China, perhaps use uh, different Chinese names. If you're teaching in Latin America or in you know in Spain and more sort of like Spanish names uh, I don't like translating names so if you throw a couple of common names for the country that you are teaching in it becomes very obvious what uh, the the question is and what the answer should be at the beginning just accept the name and then we can build it up to my name is um, there are lots of different games you can play uh, I quite like uh, bottle spin so we get the bottle we spin it around and if it points to you then the whole class get to chant together, what's your name? And the child must answer and then they can spin uh, the, the bottle. I think that's quite a nice one. Lots of teachers start off with a ball toss um, to, to throw a ball around uh, for names. There are many, many different activities um, in our series uh, they're called the WOW series. We have a game bank which all the teachers have access to and there are lots of games and activities there. So uh, good luck with uh, starting. Um, you'll find some other things uh, on our YouTube channel which is uh, the What's English YouTube channel uh, where we have T for Teachers, uh, we have our um, audio visual game bank uh, with Michelle teaching there, so check it out. If you have any great games to help new teachers uh, to start, then please do pop it in the comments section below. If you have a question, also do the same, we'll find it, and I hope to answer your question soon. Thanks for watching T for Teachers, take care, see you next time, bye for now. Hello, if you care, please like and share. Thank you. T for teachers. Hello, hi, my name is Steve Watts. I've been teaching kids for over 15 years and uh, as I'm sure you know by now, this is the time that we can have a cup of tea, if you have a cup of tea, uh, and get away from the kids uh, and we can focus on uh, a few questions that have been posted up on our Facebook page. Um, so thank you for doing that in advance and especially thank you to uh, Samantha Peralta. I hope that's pronouncing your name correctly. Um, you've given us a nice long uh, question. Um, I'll paraphrase if you don't mind, but uh, essentially it says, uh, hello Steve, uh, hello, hi. Uh, uh, can you help me? I certainly hope so. I should be faster than this in paraphrasing, shouldn't I? Um, but you said uh, you have a problem with a, a specific boy in your first year um, primary class. He's six years old. He's been exposed to English since September 2016. Uh, he's had about one hour a week. His classmates have started to speak and to use English, but he hasn't. And you're worried about if you push for vocalization that he's going to feel very stressful, but you're worried that if you don't push that he will become lazy 
and uh, won't use the language. Uh, so yes, uh, we've got a couple of things here. We, spo we spoke about pushing for vocalization a little bit, and if we put on a lot of pressure, it does get very stressful. The children can go into themselves and then not uh, vocalize. But we do need to apply gentle pressure to get them to use the language that they know. It sounds like this is a problem for you, Samantha, that is continuing. It's not something that uh, you've started to put a little bit of pressure on and it's changing. So it seems like you're asking the right questions but not maybe finding the right solution. Um, I'll suggest a couple of things here, um, but uh, anybody else watching, if you have any thoughts or feelings or comments, uh, put them in the comment section below. Um, then, you know, myself, I'll learn something new. Samantha might have something new uh, that she can try. What I would say is perhaps what we need to do uh, as the children do get older, we tend to need to give them their opinion. So perhaps uh, beforehand we can say, uh, you know, uh, you like, uh, this is the list of the things that you like. And we have a picture of a pizza with a tick, a picture of uh, maybe a hamburger with a tick, picture of spaghetti with a cross. So that we're not asking what you like or don't like, we're saying, I need you to follow this. This is what I want you to say. This is your opinion. So sometimes the children, especially the older children, they don't really want to say what they like and what they don't like in front of the other children in case that's not what they like as well. Um, so maybe giving uh, him his opinion could help him to vocalize. And again, it's not saying that uh, this is my answer, it's saying this is the general answer, but they are beginning to speak and to vocalize. Um, Six years old is quite uh, young, perhaps, to be doing uh, a little bit of that. So maybe give him um, a puppet. Uh, give him, uh, if you're using the Maggie puppet, then he can be Maggie. And he can start to vocalize the language through somebody else. So it's putting the pressure off that particular child, putting it maybe onto the puppet. And if the puppet says something silly or makes a mistake, it doesn't matter because it's the puppet that has made the mistake or has done something silly. And that may at least get the ball rolling and um, you know allow them to start vocalizing the language. And then when they realize that uh, it doesn't matter if they make mistakes, but what is important is that they do use the language, then we can um, push further down the road. Um, I would love to know what uh, what you think, uh, so please do put your thoughts and feelings in the comments section below about how we can push for vocalization a little more when um, it becomes a prolonged uh, problem. I think at a certain point you will need to perhaps uh, ask uh, for more professional input and say, okay, hey, there's something uh, something more here and uh, we need to look at perhaps um, psychology or maybe uh, you know, uh, linguistics in, in some way. But uh, anyway, there we go. So thanks for watching this episode of Tea for Teachers. Take care and I'll see you next time. Thanks again. Bye for now. Hello. If you care, please like and share. Thank you. Hello. Hi. I have a very important question for you. Have you got your tea ready? Yeah. Ready for Tea for Teachers? No? Okay. Pause and come back later. Are you back? Great! Okay, it's time for Tea for Teachers. Hello, my name is Steve Watts. I've been teaching kids uh, for over 15 years, and this is the time that I can sit down, have a look at some of your questions, and try to answer them. So let's dive straight in. Um, we have a very short question, which I think has a very long answer. Let's see how we do. Um, okay, the question is from, is it Yelena Olava? Olivach, I hope I'm somewhere near. Um, but your question is, how can I be a better teacher for the students? Okay, uh, that's a short question, but a big answer. Um, we did do a Facebook live stream about uh, the, the topic, the thing that I think is the most important thing on making you a good teacher. And so I'm going to condense almost uh, an entire lifetime of uh, study in how to be a better professional teacher. And I'm going to put it all into one word. The word is planning. I think uh, the single biggest thing that you can do to be a better teacher 
is uh, to spend time on planning your lessons. Uh, in our Facebook live stream, we looked at uh, planning to be successful in classroom management. And at this stage, when we sit down, we focus on the classes that we teach uh, one by one. We focus on the individuals in that class and we plan and we adapt the lesson to fit uh, the class, which is a collection of individuals. I think that's the single biggest thing you can do to be a better teacher. Um, I think uh, balance is also something that uh, we need to think about. Uh, yes, you need to be fun and friendly, but with that you also need to be structured and uh, controlling and, and disciplined. I think there's balance in terms of the energy levels of the class, that you have high energy level activities and lower um, energy level activities. But this is, wow, it's a big, big topic. I hope I've given just uh, a little something uh, to help you on your journey to becoming a better teacher. And um, perhaps the other thing that I could say just at the end of this is that a good teacher never stops learning how to be a good teacher. Um, I would love to read your thoughts and feelings on this topic. Put it in the uh, comment section below. Good teachers are always looking out for new ideas, always looking out uh, for uh, different ways that we can engage, uh, motivate and stimulate the children that we teach. Uh, so thank you very much for watching this episode of Tea for Teachers. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Cheerio.